Hey students, welcome to IMS online class. Okay, so I'm sure you must be excited to learn the next thing. In the last video, we studied about force, right? The different types of force. So what are the different types of force? Like contact force, non-contact force, balanced force, unbalanced force. So mostly we saw that oh, force is an external agent due to which motion or your object moves or it stops. So what else force can do? What are the other things that force can do? So in this video, we're going to study about the effects of force and another one interesting quantity called pressure. Okay. So first, let's see about effects of force. Now, force can do a lot of things. Due to force, we can do a lot of things. Let's discuss some of things. First is that, as is as I have said earlier in the last video, force can change the state of motion or rest of an object that is by applying force we can either make a rest object to move or a moving object to stop to come at rest for example a ball simply lying if you kick it it is at rest when you kick you're giving it force it, it starts to move right uh, another example suppose you're uh, playing cricket you're batting okay you're a batsman and when the baller delivers the ball and you just take a defensive shot so what you're doing there you are using force to stop the ball or simply if a, a footballer kicks the ball towards the goal and the goalkeeper stops the ball. How it does the goalkeeper stops it? By holding it, right? So the goal, goalkeeper is applying force to stop the ball. So in this case, force is being used, force is acting on a body to either move an object or to stop an object. <coughs> Similarly, force can change the direction of an object. We can apply force to change the direction of the object too. How it is that? Uh, remember as I uh, told you in the last video, uh, like in cricket only, when the baller is bowling to you and you take a shot towards the boundary, okay, in the leg side or in the off side, so what you are doing? You are applying force in that direction. So what, happen by, uh, what does it happen by doing that? The ball which is coming towards you now changes direction. So, how, why it changed the direction? Because you applied some force there. Isn't it? Understood? Good. So, this is how force is used to change the direction of an object. So, similarly, we can change the direction of any object by applying force. Right? Now, the next thing is, force can, cha can change the shape and size of the object. If you apply the adequate or right amount of force to any object, you can change its shape and size. More common example you can take with rubber band. If you take a rubber band and if you stretch it, so what you are doing? You are applying force. So when you are applying force, what does it happen? The shape of the band changes, isn't it? The, sorry, not the shape, the size of the band is changing, it is increasing. Similarly, if you take any clay, with less amount of force also, the shape and size of the clay can be changed. Similarly, by applying adequate or uh, required amount of force, we can change the shape and size of an object. If you ever have visited any blacksmith, okay, you can uh, see in blacksmith they would iron, they will hit the iron with much force and they will give the iron this perfect shape. So force is making the iron to, uh, to come in that perfect shape. So force can change the shape and size of an object, okay. Next, force can change the speed of an object. By applying force, we can change the speed of an object. So suppose uh, one of your friend is riding bicycle, okay, so what you do, what you uh, did actually is well, you went and you just pushed your friend from behind. So what will happen in that case? The cycle would move even faster. So by applying force, you increase the speed here, isn't it? So when you have to move speed on a bicycle, you pedal faster. So you are applying more force, so cycle is moving more quickly, isn't it? Uh, similarly, if a person is swing in the swing in the Okay, is swinging, swinging in the uh, swing. Okay, so what uh, what uh, you do generally when your friend is doing that, you will push him from the back. When you, if you push him more hard, he is going to move for a greater distance. So in this case, in both these cases, the force is used here to increase the speed of an object, and also force can be used to decrease the speed of an object if the direction of force you are applying is opposite to the direction of motion, isn't it? Suppose you are uh, pedaling hard in the cycle, you are going very fast and suddenly uh, you see there is a blockage ahead. So what you do in that case? 
You need to slow it down, right? So what do you, on what do you do? You apply brakes. When you apply brakes, that brake apply force on the wheel of the bicycle and it makes the bicycle to slow down. Here you are decreasing the speed, isn't it? Uh, similarly, in many other examples can be taken where force is used to decrease the speed of an object. Understood? So these are few effects of force. If you, if you want to note it down, you can pause the video and you can note it. Okay? Okay. So now, uh, have you ever uh, thought that why does the new cutting tools, a new knife cuts much better uh, vegetables or fruits as compared to an old one? Have you ever wondered why does it happen that when you stand on a pile of sand, you sink a little bit, but when you sit or when you lie down, you don't sink that much. The same happens when you stand on a mattress. When you stand on a mattress, it sinks a little bit, okay? It pressures, uh, it... Uh, little bit the size of this uh, mattress decreases but you know, when you sit or when you lie down on it that much decrease is not seen okay so why does it happen well one thing is that as we have learned about force it, it occurs due to force so this special act, uh, special aspect of force that is related with area is called as pressure okay so pressure you can say the amount of force amount of force acting per unit area okay so pressure is the amount of force acting per unit area so we can say pressure Pressure as P, force as F, and area as A, then P is equal to F by A. Pressure is equal to pressure equals to force by area. Now, if we keep the area as a constant quantity, if we keep the area as a constant quantity, here area in the sense the area of contact between two surfaces. Okay, if you keep the area constant, then more force leads to more pressure. If a larger force is applied, then the pressure will be more. Okay. Uh, uh, for example, you can say if the area is uh, same for the same area, more force you are applying. That is, if uh, in a pile of sand, okay, in the same pile of sand, when you are standing, how much you will sink? Instead, if your parents, if they stand, they will sink more, right? Because the force will be more, so they will sink more. The pressure will be more, and decrease in uh, force results in decrease in pressure. More force, more pressure, less force, less pressure when area is constant, keeping the area fixed. Now, if we keep the force fixed, fixed force, then pressure is inversely proportional to area. It means that increase in area decreases the pressure and decrease in area increases the pressure. Okay, so we can say if force is constant or we can say it is fixed then pressure is inversely proportional to area that is increase in area decreases Pressure. Increase in area decreases the pressure. For example, uh, if only you, you take your only uh, your example, when you are uh, standing or lying down on a pile of sand, you won't sink down. But if you stand, you're, uh, when you are sitting or lying down on a pile of sand, you won't sink down. But when you stand up, you will sink more. Why it happens? Because when you are standing, the area in contact is quite less. Only your feet will be in contact with the sand. So, it, But when you are lying down, your entire back is with the sand. So here area is more, that's why pressure is less. But when you are standing, the area of contact is less. So pressure is 
more. So let us take some of the example where you can uh, understand better how pressure works. Uh, for example, if you take the vehicles that are uh, moving in snow, okay, snow is quite a smooth surface. So mostly vehicles that move on wheels, they can't move in snow properly. Why? Because wheels, they have a smaller surface area. That's why they apply more pressure and they sink in the snow, making it uh, not comfortable for them to move. So that's why sledges or uh, ski, uh, the skiing sledges or normal setting sledges, it is generally flat surfaced. Okay, even the snowmobile, it has some uh, kind of flat surface, right? Because this uh, flat surface, it increases the surface area, so uh, making it easier to move on snow. Similarly, you can take all the cutting instruments, okay, like knife or you can say blade, razors, then uh, axe, everything, it is generally made sharp. Why is it sharp? Why is it easier to cut with a blunt knife than a sharp knife? Because if the uh, knife is sharp, that means the area of contact with knife with the other object will be less. If the area is less, so pressure will be more for a given force. Understood? You have to apply less force, you can get more pressure if the area is less. So that's why all cutting instruments are generally made sharp so that the area of contact will be less. Similarly, for thumb pins, thumb pins generally have very small area of contact with the wall, so it can easily push through with less amount of force. Understood? Similarly, you can take the rear, rear wheels of the tractor. The rear wheels of the tractor are generally border. They are very broad, right? The back wheels of the tractor, they are very big, very broad. Have you ever wondered why is that? Why is the front wheel quite small and the back wheel is quite very big? Of a tractor. That's because when uh, tractors, they sometimes they have to work in a muddy area, okay. And if the back wheel, if it is uh, isn't that broad, if it is small, then that whole tractor will struck there. It will sink down. So that's why the broader area is made so as to decrease the pressure of the vehicle, so that it, it can move easily in the mud also, okay. Understood? So these are the some of the examples where pressure is increased or decreased based on the area. Increasing, by increasing area, we are decreasing the pressure. By decreasing the area, we are increasing the pressure. Understood? Now, so pressure is also a physical quantity. It can also be measured. Now, in order to measure the pressure, we need a unit. Right? So, let's see about the unit of pressure. Formula pressure equals to force by area. So using that, you can find the unit. Okay, so pressure is equal to if you take a terms of unit, the unit of force is Newton, and the area SI unit will be meter square. So unit of pressure equals to Newton per meter square, Newton per meter square, which is given a single term called Pascal. Again, okay. this term, the unit of pressure is called, SI unit of pressure is Pascal, named after a French scientist, okay, Blaise Pascal. The French scientist, after this name, this unit is given as Pascal. There is also one more unit which is used to measure pressure, that unit is, is ATM. Okay, not that ATM where uh, you you have to withdraw the money. Okay, not that uh, unit. It's a different ATM. It here ATM means atmospheric pressure. We'll study a little bit uh, later what is atmospheric pressure. But this is also one more unit, ATM. What ATM equals to 760 milliliter of mercury. Say that 76 centimeter of mercury column. So, one atmospheric pressure equals to the amount of pressure applied if you take a mercury column of height of 76 centimeter or 760 millimeter. How much pressure will that apply? That is equals to one atmospheric pressure. Understood? So, uh, this is a small thing about pressure. 
But one thing is that mostly what exam how many examples what we took of pressure mostly they include solids, okay, like knives, razors, uh, vehicles. But it isn't that pressure is only restricted for solids. Pressure can be seen in liquids as well as in gases also. Okay, so let's study about pressure in fluids. So next is pressure in fluids. Well, what are fluids? Well, gases and liquids collectively they are called as fluids. Means both gases and liquids. Inside the fluids, it contains both gases and liquids. Means not a mixture. Rather, liquid also we can see as a fluid. Gas also we can see as a fluid. So in case of uh, pressure in fluids, first let's uh, take uh, this fluids means both gases also and liquids both can apply pressure. Let's see how it works. First, in case of liquids, liquid like uh, water. Okay. So uh, if you imagine, suppose you take a uh, mug, empty mug, okay, and you just you just keep it on your head. You how much uh, force you can feel of that mug? Quite little, like weight only less. What will happen if you completely feel the contain fill the mug with water? Then you keep it on your head. It will be quite heavy. So that means the weight of the mug has increased. So who has increased the weight? The water what we added. So that means liquid can apply pressure. So that pressure exerted. That pressure is the pressure exerted by liquids. Okay. So there are some properties that is seen in case of pressure exerted by a liquid. That is first thing is pressure of a, in a liquid depends on the depth. Okay. How much deep a thing is. Increase in depth increases the pressure. So that's why uh, scuba divers, those who go inside the sea, they are only allowed up to a certain height because the more deep they are going inside, more pressure they will feel upon them. Okay. The next is pressure of a liquid is the same in all direction. You can uh, easily understand it using a simple experiment. Okay. That is, uh, if you take a container and make holes, okay, make hole at uh, at the same height, a different place of the container in the same way and just seal the hole little bit then you fill the container then you remove the seal you will see that equal amount of liquid or equal amount of water will be flowing out of it okay from the holes if they are at the same height so pressure is equal in all direction in a liquid okay so that is if you take a container and if you make hole then in same amount of water will flow in all direction equal amount of water will flow in all direction so it depends on only on height neither on the sides okay then another is that pressure applied on a liquid is distributed equally in all direction means in this case if you apply pressure upward then more water will be flowing but not just in one side from all the sides okay this third property it is also called as pascal's law Remember Pascal? Okay, the person who gave the unit of pressure. Okay, so this is also called as Pascal's law. It is pressure applied to a liquid is transmitted equally in all direction. And based on this law only, the hydraulics that is used in different machines or lifting objects, it is used or it is based on this law, Pascal's law. Okay, so these are the properties of pressure applied in case of liquids. Okay, next let us see how pressure applied in case of air. Okay, so uh, let me give an example. Uh, all, uh, all of you might have uh, blown balloons, right? On your friend's birthday or suppose on your own birthday. But for any other reason, most of you, you might have blown air into the balloon. And even if some of you might not have blown balloons, at least you have pumped, uh, might have pumped your bicycle. Right, the bicycle needs air, right? So when you uh, when you might have noticed, if you blow excess amount of air into the balloons, what happens? They burst, boom, right? They burst. The same case happens if you blow excess amount of air into your bicycle, the tube bursts. So that means air also continuously applies pressure on its container where it is kept. So that pressure is called as pressure in air. Okay, so air, so that means from these two observations, uh, from these two imagination, we can conclude that air can also apply pressure. So well, the thing is that we are all surrounded with air, right? 
air is completely surrounded uh, is completely surrounded around the earth it is completely covered around us like a blanket and that is that we call as atmosphere so that means that air which is present all around us it can also apply pressure so that amount of pressure is called, that is being applied by the atmosphere is called atmospheric pressure okay the pressure exerted by the pressure exerted by the atmosphere on an object is called as atmospheric pressure so we are constantly under pressure okay not due to studies or homework okay we are constantly under pressure due to atmosphere so for the distance we are being in atmosphere we are always in pressure so that means someone is always suppressing us but we don't feel anything right why is it that when suppose i am keeping my hand like this or like this so that means there is a pressure on my hand but i am not feeling like someone is pushing me downwards or upward why is that it is because the amount of pressure in the upward is equal to the amount of pressure given by the air in the in my downward okay the downward air it is applying pressure in the upward direction and the upward air it is applying pressure in the downward direction due to which the net force is being cancelled so i can't feel the pressure okay understood or one more example you can take our inside our body there is a pressure also that is blood pressure so our blood pressures also helps us in managing the atmospheric pressure so that's why what happens mostly to mountaineers or mountain climbers those who climb high mountains so when there is an increase in altitude or height when you go to more height the amount of air decreases so that's why the amount of atmospheric pressure also decreases so since atmospheric de uh, pressure decreases the blood which is in our inside our body the blood vessels they burst and sometimes blood comes out because the blood pressure is quite more as compared to the outer atmospheric pressure so sometimes blood comes out through the nose or ear or mouth it happens to mountain climbers okay so this is an uh, example of uh, atmospheric pressure so might so you might think how if this uh, uh, some of you may think that uh, since air is quite very much light air is not heavy right it's quite light so that that's why the amount of pressure will be quite very less we won't feel anything but it isn't like that the amount of atmospheric pressure per unit area on our on a place okay for an object per unit area the amount of atmospheric pressure will be equal to the weight of a baby elephant or two three boys of your own class it will be equal to their weight how much your uh, two three friends will weigh that much amount of pressure is constantly being applied on us but due to the uh, pressure exerted by the lower air we are not feeling anything okay so this is atmospheric pressure well for uh, most of the uh, device uh, devices like most of this uh, navigation instruments that is like a transporting instrument like planes okay planes jets they need to keep in track with the atmospheric pressure so that's why in order to atmos measure the atmospheric pressure a device was made okay that device used to measure okay to measure atmospheric pressure the device which is used to measure atmospheric pressure is called barometer is called barometer okay barometer is a device which is used to measure atmospheric pressure and the first simple barometer was made by the scientist named e toriselli okay e toriselli was the first person who made the first barometer which is a simple which is called as simple barometer simple barometer or it is also called as mercury barometer okay later on 
after the advancement of science and technology, different kinds of barometers were used, like Watkins barometer, aneroid barometer, which is uh, a digital barometer nowadays. So this is also used, but the first was made by E. Florissant. Okay. So this is all about pressure. Okay. So this is for now. Have a nice day. Thank you.